The name Megaraptor almost sounds made up, the product of a Hollywood movie monster, a Jurassic World hybrid dinosaur perhaps. While scientists do tend to give dinosaurs more dramatic names than extant animals, for example, Raptor Rex, Tyrannotitan, Sauroposeidon, Supersaurus, and Scorpio Venador, Megaraptor well and truly earns its name. The dinosaur in question was an apex predator from the late Cretaceous of Patagonia, in what is today Argentina's Neuquén province. Boasting formidable weaponry and a large size, this lesser-known theropod was one of the hidden gems of the dinosaur world, a creature that in life surely would have been an incredible sight to see. And today, we will be meeting it. This video will take us back to the forests and plains of the Portozuelo Formation, between 90 and 88 million years ago. This takes us to the Carniacian stage of the Cretaceous, a time when dinosaurs had sprung into all sorts of weird and wonderful forms, conquering the globe in what would be the beginning of their very last act. It is here that we meet Megaraptor in all of its splendor and glory. Today, we will be examining how it lived and hunted in these ancient lands, as well as the impact it had on the world of paleontology when it was eventually described in 1998. Sit back and relax as we travel back through time to meet Megaraptor, one of the most terrifying theropods of the Cretaceous. Despite the name, Megaraptor Namun Huaikiai was not a dromaeosaur, although it was initially mistaken for one. Take one look at the bones or an artist's reconstruction of Megaraptor, and you'll probably notice one thing, the huge size of its arms and claws. Unlike some late Cretaceous theropods such as Carnotaurus or Tyrannosaurus, Megaraptor's forelimbs were hypertrophied, evolved to be comparatively massive against its distant cousins. When the huge 30-centimeter long claws were first examined, they were understandably assumed to be the sickle claws present on the feet of a large relative of Velociraptor or Deinonychus, and it wasn't until the wider sections of the forelimbs were discovered that scientists were able to piece together the puzzle. When the remainder of the arm and hand bones were found, Scientists were astonished to see that not only were the claws very large for a theropod, but the hands and arms as a whole were too. In fact, the only large Cretaceous theropods that come close to matching the arm proportions of Megaraptor were the Spinosaurids, some of which used their arms and claws to slash at fish from rivers and lakes. Megaraptor's claws, though, were even larger and more curved than theirs. Megaraptor's entire body length, from nose to tail, is thought to have been between 8 and 9 meters. The remainder of the body followed the classic large theropod body plan seen in many groups of Mesozoic apex predators. The dinosaur walked and ran on two legs, holding its head out straight in front of it, with the tail tapering out behind held clear off the floor. Its neck supported a long, relatively narrow skull, that would have been filled with teeth that were suited to tearing at flesh. Whether or not it possessed a covering of feathers is not known, especially as scientists are still debating as to which group of theropods Megaraptor is related to most closely. As a basal member of the Titanary clade, it may be linked to the Tyrannosauroids, in which case a covering of feathers in some capacity would be likely. However, if it was more closely related to the Spinosaurids or Allosauroids, it may have been featherless, as these animals are not associated with such integuments. Megaraptor went through a great degree of turbulence in the early years of its discovery. It all started with a huge 30-centimeter long claw, recurved and sharp, this was found in rocks within the Portozuelo Formation in northwest Patagonia, Argentina, by award-winning Argentine paleontologist Fernando E. Novas. 
Novas is the man responsible for describing, or at least co-describing, many bizarre and famous Argentinian dinosaurs, most of which he accomplished whilst working with the Argentine National Scientific and Technical Research Council. Dinosaur names attributed to him include not only Megaraptor, but Austroraptor, Abelosaurus, Tyrannotitan, Unenlagia, and Chilesaurus, among several others. So it would eventually become clear when further fossil material was discovered that Megaraptor was indeed no dromaeosaur. So what was it? What followed was several years of scientists trying to piece together the puzzle. Some scientists began to believe that Megaraptor was a basal allosauroid shortly after the dromaeosaur theory had been debunked. This theory came about as a result of the discovery of Australovenador in Australia around the same time. Australovenador was initially thought to be an allosauroid due to similarities with existing dinosaurs in that clade. Comparing Australovenador with the form of the arm bones with Megaraptor, an allosauroid assignment was considered for the latter. However, this was later brought into question again when more of the skeleton was discovered. In 2014, a juvenile Megaraptor was unearthed from the Patagonian rocks, and this time the skull was preserved. It was narrow in form, and the teeth were curved backwards, pointing towards the animal's throat. Allosauroids don't typically possess these features, and so it looked like Megaraptor, as a result, wasn't one. This brought about the next theory, that Megaraptor was in fact a Tyrannosauroid, related perhaps to the basal genera such as Tryptosaurus. This would also make sense, as basal Tyrannosauroids were known to have had long claws on the hands of the forelimbs. When hunting, Megaraptor is thought to have deployed a rather grisly strategy. Firstly, the dinosaur has been interpreted as an ambush predator, hiding in the foliage to disguise itself until the very last moment. It would stalk its prey, Ornithischian dinosaurs or perhaps young sauropods, extensively from the shadows, calculating and watching. Whilst dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex likely utilized a similar hunting strategy, a lot of big theropods opted to attack with their jaws first, delivering a slashing or crushing blow to the neck or torso with the teeth. Now, if Megaraptor acted in this way, those devastating claws would be wasted. As such, Megaraptor likely attacked with its arms open wide, ready to maul its prey into oblivion. The claws were likely used as knives, puncturing the flanks of its prey as it lunged forward. This way, the predator's arms would have acted as a vice-like trap, ensnaring the victim on both sides, so that the more it struggled, the deeper Megaraptor's claws would sink. Once the prey was confidently trapped, the carnivores thought to have deployed another trick twisting and manipulating its claws within the prey item's body, perforating and puncturing vital organs to end the process as quickly as possible. Once the victim was down, Megaraptor would have enclosed its jaws around the neck before tucking in. Dinosaurs may no longer be the movie monsters we once thought they were, but it is important to remember that some aspects of nature are truly grisly. The claws may have also acted as tools to assist with feeding. As Megaraptor dispatched a carcass, the sharp, curved talons would have helped to shred it further into bite-sized pieces. On top of this, there is also a chance they could have been used in elaborate mating displays, perhaps with the male with the largest and most impressive claws or arms, picked to pass on the genes to the next generation. This is, of course, speculation, and there is much for us to learn about this dinosaur. But given some of the bizarre ways in which animals in the modern day attract mates, it may not be out of the question. Megaraptor was a resident of the Portozuelo Formation, 
a mass of sediment that stretches across Argentina, over the Neuquén, Mendoza, and Rio Negro provinces. Today, the landscape of Patagonia on which the formation sits is an arid, mountainous region surrounded by dry scrubland. This is a far cry from the world that Megaraptor lived in, a humid forest locale complete with rivers and floodplains. The Portozuelo Formation is specifically known for its dinosaurian fauna, with Megaraptor being an apex predator within the region. Massive titanosaurian sauropods lived here, the young of which were likely hunted by the carnivore. Such sauropods included Balsaurus, Malargiosaurus, and the truly colossal Futalonchosaurus. The adults of these species would have towered over the forests and plains, and would have had no natural enemies in their environment. Theropods were by far the most common animal in the Portozuelo Formation, but not many of them were comparable in size and strength to Megaraptor. Abelosaurids lived here, relatives of the well-known Carnotaurus, that would live in South America towards the very end of the Cretaceous. Alem Gossem was the Abelosaur representative for Portozuelo, but was much smaller than many of its relatives. Dromaeosaurs were very common here, and were represented by the genera Pomparaptor, Unenlogia, and Nucanraptor. Some of these were Unenlogian dromaeosaurs, much more slender and heron-like in comparison to their relatives. The bizarre Patagonicus in Alvarezsaurid was known from here too, essentially a long-tongued, strong-clawed, insectivorous dinosaur, filling the ecological niche of the anteaters and pangolins of the modern southern hemisphere. In the rivers swam small fish, such as Luefoichthys, potential prey for the Unenlogian dromaeosaurs. Alongside them lived several species of prehistoric freshwater turtle, whilst early birds hunted the insects that swarmed and hummed over the water. Occasionally, a slightly larger flying shape would form over the water, easily recognizable as an Asdarkid pterosaur, in this case, Argentina Draco. Whilst its wingspan was comparable to the armspan of an adult human, its relatives elsewhere were growing to the sizes of giraffes. After scientists got a better understanding of what exactly Megaraptor was, they were able to place it in its own clade, Megaraptora, within which sits the family Megaraptoridae. All Megaraptorans were known for their exceptionally large and powerful claws, many of which were situated at the end of very long arms that were used as primary weapons when bringing down prey. Megaraptorans were most common on the continent of South America and spanned the early to late Cretaceous, between 130 to 66 million years ago, right up till the end of the age of dinosaurs. Outside of the clade's namesake itself, the most famous Megaraptoran is Maip macrothorax, quite possibly the largest of its relatives native to the Chorillo Formation of Argentina in the Mastrictian of the Cretaceous. The dinosaur obtained its name from its exceptionally deep and powerful build, with arms even longer than those of Megaraptor. Described and named as recently as 2022, such a dinosaur was quick to make waves amongst both paleontological circles and within the public too. A 2014 analysis by Porfiry et al places Australovenador within the Megaraptora clade II, specifically within the Megaraptoridae family. This six-meter-long hunter of the cool Australian forests, situated much closer to the South Pole than today, was a more lightweight Megaraptoran than its cousins. Despite its build, it was still most likely the apex predator of the Winton Formation, where it chased hypsilophodonts and juvenile sauropods through the ginkgo forests along the shores of Oxbow Lakes. Further north, Fukui Raptor, another lightweight Megaraptoran which has sometimes been confused with Australovenador, 
stalked its prey in the woodlands of what would eventually become the city of Katsuyama in Japan. Another relatively well-known Megaraptoran, Fukui Raptor lived alongside a whole host of strange animals, from nimble aerial avalians to huge titanosaurs. Other lesser-known examples of Megaraptorans can be found throughout the late Cretaceous. More obscure relatives of these dinosaurs include Murus raptor, Orcoraptor, Trotienia, and Aerosteon from Argentina, another indeterminate Megaraptorid from Australia, and two genera from Thailand, Vayuraptor and Fuyang Venador. Outside of the Megaraptor clade, the closest relatives of these dinosaurs were the Tyrannosauroids and Compsognathids. As of 2022, they have been confidently identified as Silurosaurs. While there is much that can be determined from the fossil remains of Megaraptor and its strange apex predator relatives, there is only so much that can be learned from the bones known to science. Megaraptor and its relatives are amongst the most fascinating of all late Cretaceous theropods. And with more fossil content, we may be able to uncover many of the secrets regarding how these animals lived, hunted, and survived in the forests and plains of ancient Argentina.